because your brain capacity is limited. Now, let's imagine you have 100% brain capacity and you can use those 100% to pay attention, to pay focus, uh, and of course, to think about things, to sort through emotions, etc. Is it hard for you to get focused and to stay focused? And do you often procrastinate those important tasks? Then let me tell you, it's not because you don't focus hard enough. It's because you overload the logical part of your brain, your prefrontal cortex, with excessive thoughts or emotions, which then sap your ability to focus. Now, therefore, in this video, I will give you clarity and mental power. I will explain the concept of cognitive load and why you should rather reduce your cognitive load instead of trying to focus harder. I will also cover what causes procrastination in the first place because it is related to your emotional cognitive load. And lastly, I will give you a killer tool that takes less than one minute to apply. Why is it a killer tool? Well, simply put, because it kills procrastination, literally. This tool will sharpen your focus massively. As always, if you're excited, please take a moment to smash those like and subscribe buttons to grow the channel and so that we can build an army of high performance and neuroscience enthusiasts together. I would highly appreciate it. That said, my name is Nicholas. I'm a neuroscientist, dementia researcher, as well as a high performance and flow coach. And this is how to reduce your cognitive load for extreme focus, flow, and destroying procrastination. So first and foremost, let's talk about cognitive load. And what you need to know is that there are three types of cognitive load. The first one is the one on the upper left, and that is intrinsic load. Now, intrinsic load is simply put the complexity of the information. And it makes sense, the more complex the information is, the more cognitive load it creates in your brain because your brain has a more difficult time to analyze the information. Makes sense. The second type of cognitive load is germane load. And germane load is the process of linking new information to the information that you already know. For example, if you learn something new about a topic you're interested in, such as strength training or a topic that is relevant to your work. And it's this process that the brain has to go through that it links what is new to what you already know, this linking process that can create cognitive load in your brain. And lastly, that is what we want to focus on today. So if I refer to cognitive load, I in fact refer to this, and this is extraneous load on the lower right. An extraneous load is simply put unnecessary and distracting information from your environment. It could simply be your colleague that's knocking at the door and distracting you. Uh, it could be your phone, social media. It could be emails because you want to distract yourself while you work, etc. So it could be anything. Now, what you need to know in this context is that high cognitive load is like having low bandwidth. Now, generally spoken, bandwidth in computing is the maximum rate of data transfer per second of data transfer per time unit. And it's depicted here in the form of these tubes, these water tubes here. Low bandwidth would mean that the low amount of water is passing through the tube per second, whereas a higher bandwidth would mean that a higher amount of water is passing through the tube uh, per second. Uh, likewise, you, you might have seen this before, uh, when you download a file from the internet, for example, that's when your bandwidth is in fact very important, uh, when you want to look at it. Because let's imagine you have a bandwidth of 100 megabytes per second. If you download a file, you download this one file with 100 megabytes per second. However, if you download two files at once, then you will download both of the files with around 50 megabytes per second. So it slows down. And the same is also true for your brain. Because your brain capacity is limited. Now let's imagine you have 100% brain capacity and you can use those 100% to pay attention, to pay focus, uh, and of course, to think about things, to sort through emotions, etc. What could happen is that you might be distracted. Maybe your colleague is coming in, knocking at your door, asking you for a favor. So you have to think about this favor that takes up some of your brain capacity. 
you call this brain capacity working memory, by the way. And again, maybe 10%, but it goes, your total focus, your total brain capacity goes down. Then while you work, you might think, hmm, I'm hungry. What should I eat for dinner? I still have a lot of stuff in the fridge that I need to use up. And just this mere thought, again, takes away from, from your brain capacity. Then you might suddenly realize, oh God, I have a deadline due tomorrow. Oh God, I hope I've done everything. I need to check. I hope I'm fine. And this is problematic in two ways, because on the one hand, of course, it occupies your brain. So you think about this project all the time. The deadline is coming closer. And on the other hand, you have emotions coming up, stress, anxiety, overwhelm. And these emotions also take away from your brain capacity. Another example could be that you might have had a fight with someone you like. Maybe it was your wife. Maybe it was someone you related to. And you might think about it all day. You might want to apologize. You feel bad about it. And again, this thinking about what is wrong, the emotions that come up also takes away from your brain capacity. And what is left might only be as little as 40% or less. That is what you have left to focus. That is what you have left to pay attention. So basically, in other words, all of the thoughts that we have in our minds and the emotions that we feel, that take away from our ability to focus. So simply put, if you want to improve your focus, then it's not about focusing harder. It's about removing all of the distracting thoughts in your brain. And I have to make it clear that even ignoring is an active process. Even ignoring something reduces your brain capacity. It reduces your working memory. For example, your phone. Your phone is probably the biggest source of distractions that can be, and there are even studies, literally studies, that show that having your phone lying beside your laptop, just having it there, already reduces your attention performance. Why is that? Simply put, because you need to ignore your phone. You might think about uh, checking social media, watching those beautiful cat videos, and you have to say no. You have to limit your behavior. You have to push back, no-go as we call it. And this process again costs energy to not give in to a behavior. And it goes away from your focus, goes away from your brain capacity. So once again, if you work guys, make sure to remove your brain and social media. In any case, what you also need to know is that reducing your cognitive load is not only meant to improve your focus, but is the way to improve your focus. Because simply put, reducing your cognitive load gets you into the flow state. Now, I will not go into the flow state in detail, but the flow state is this super deeply immersed state, in which is so deeply immersed into what you do that you literally forget everything else. Five hours can feel like five minutes. For example, you start video gaming, you look at the clock and you're like, damn, five hours have already passed. It might feel like five minutes. So once again, reduce your cognitive load. On the other hand, I want to mention it here. I've made a few separate video about flow. And another way to get into flow is dopamine. Now, there are several processes that release dopamine in your brain. And one of them could, for example, be curiosity. Let's say you read something, you stumble across something interesting. It could be, hey, dopamine is this molecule that creates drive and motivation. And there are drugs that can increase dopamine. You think about it, it's like, hmm, I don't know. So this is just this interest. This curiosity that releases dopamine in your brain. And this is also one of the ways in which you get into the super deeply immersed flow state. Once again, I link you two different videos in the description. So if you're interested in the flow state, and if you're interested in getting the 500% productivity, the 430% creativity boost, do you have it in flow? Then I highly recommend you to check this out. What you also need to know is that there's a link between negative emotions, cognitive load, as well as procrastination. Now, in general, procrastination can be caused by two uh, mechanisms. And the first one would be the fact that the challenge is simply put too hard. It's too difficult, too overwhelming. You don't know what you should do. And that causes anxiety. And this anxiety, simply put, holds you back from even getting started. A simple example would be writing your thesis. I have to write my PhD thesis soon, for example. And just sitting there, especially with a tight deadline, it's very uncomfortable. So you might sit there, you think about, I have to finish this in a week. What the hell am I supposed to do? I don't even know how I should write it, where I should start. And again, all of this stress prevents you from even getting started. 
On the other hand, what could happen is the exact opposite. And that's the fact that this challenge might be too easy. It might cause boredom. Now to give you an example, one of the things I have to do in the lab as a researcher is to prepare pipette tips. So I literally have to put pipette tips into a freaking box so that I can put it up with my pipette. And for some of my experiments, I have to prepare boxes and boxes of this stuff. Needless to say, that's boring as hell. And obviously it's so boring that I don't want to do it. So I tend to procrastinate it. And if I can get someone else to do it for me, then I obviously will. And once more, in this case, you would actually have to increase the challenge a bit, make it a bit more difficult or add something else to it. Uh, on the other hand, the problem is that those negative emotions not only cause procrastination, but they also increase your cognitive load. In other words, emotional cognitive load. Obviously, if you have anxiety, if you have overwhelm, then it creates all of those nagging thoughts in your brain, like, oh God, what should I do? The worry, you don't know what to do, you think you're not good enough, etc. You doubt yourself. And again, this all it's all excessive, unnecessary thoughts that go away from your brain capacity that sap your focus and attention. On the other hand, this could also happen if you're bored, because then you're thinking about the million other things that you would love to do instead. You like to complain, you hate it, it's horrible. So you get all of these thoughts in your brain once again that increase your cognitive load. And that in itself also blocks you from getting into flow, blocks you into getting into this highly focused state. Now, the question of course is, what should you do? How do you melt away the cognitive load so that your focus increases? And there are basically uh, three simple ways to do that. The first one is that you need to dispose of these messy thoughts and emotions. And how do you do that? Well, the secret of that is in fact your to-do list. I mentioned in another video, but to-do lists are horrible for productivity, absolutely horrible. That was in my Eisenhower matrix video, so I'll link you that in the description as well. Instead, to-do lists are cognitive unloading tools, so they help you to get rid of these messy thoughts and emotions. For example, let's say you're working and all of a sudden a thought comes into your mind and you remember, oh God, I have to finish this task by tomorrow. I need to check my emails, whatever it is, get your to-do list, write it down. Just say, all right, at 4 p.m. I check my emails. That way you get the thought out of your head and you can focus on working again. It also works for emotions. Let's say something worries you. Let's say the fact that the deadline is approaching for a project you're currently having. Again, just write it down, write down your thoughts. What worries you? What can you do? And once you've done it, it's out of your head. You can get back to your work and your focus will increase because they have just removed the unnecessary cognitive load from these messy thoughts. A second way to deal with cognitive load would be to eliminate distractions. As I told you earlier, just having your phone there already reduces your focus because you need to ignore it. Again, ignoring is an active process that goes away from your focus. So the best way to deal with this is to just remove every distraction to begin with, preliminary. So take your phone and put it in another room, close your emails, delete your social media apps, whatever it is, just make it harder for you to distract yourself. And finally, you can also simply remove the need to think. And the way in which you can remove the need to think is by pre-planning your day, for example. What I do today, later on, is setting three goals for tomorrow, and I will take my calendar and schedule what I do at what time. I actually made a video about this, so we'll link it for you in the description, how you can schedule your day for high performance. And simply having this plan that you can execute makes it easier for you because you don't have to think anymore. There are no thoughts that block you in executing. There are no thoughts that blocks your focus. Now, that said, to finish off on the round off this uh, little video here, I want to give you a tool, a very powerful tool with which you can massively enhance your focus and get even stuff that you tend to procrastinate done. And this tool is called the Clear Goals Trigger, which I learned from the Flow Research Collective. So this tool literally gets you into this deeply immersed flow state. It can enhance your focus and it can kill procrastination. Here's what you need to do. First and foremost, I want you to take your calendar and block off 90 to 120 minutes undisturbed time. This is important. If you don't, again, if you don't schedule it, it won't be done. If it's on the calendar, it won't be done. 
That's why you want to write it down. Then I want you to set a goal, a smart goal that you want to accomplish in those 90 to 120 minutes. For example, tell yourself that you want to write 500 words about the effects of dopamine, the motivation chemical. Then next, you want to grab a piece of paper. It can literally be a post-it or whatever you find on your desk. You can even write it on your hand if you really feel like it. The point here is that you want to tell yourself and list in ridiculous detail every single activity that you need to do to accomplish your goal. And if I mean ridiculous, I mean ridiculous. Literally, you can write down, open your laptop. Then you can write down, open a Word document. Then Google papers about dopamine. Copy and paste the information of at least 20 papers into this Word document. Start sorting the information. So what makes sense, etc. So just, again, make it as detailed and as ridiculously crazy as possible. Then next, of course, you can sort these activities. So make sure that they are in order. Again, the less you have to think about it, the better. And then ask yourself, what is the first step? Because again, the most difficult part about getting over procrastination, and in fact, the first phase of flow is also known as the struggle phase. So you always have to get through this initial resistance. And that's why we want to make the first step as easy as possible. And that's why you ask yourself that. So what is the first step to get this task done? And then you want to list every activity that leads to this first step. Once again, you want to make beginning as easily as possible, because once you are in this focused state, it's easy to hold. But getting in there, that is the, that is the art. That is the secret. And that is why you want to be very ridiculously detailed here. And once you have that, once you have your list, you have your little list of activities that you want to execute, you have every activity that leads to the first step that you need to do, then you can stop thinking, literally, because all you need to do is execute. And at this point, since you don't need to think anymore, your cognitive load will be very low. And because your cognitive load is low, your focus will be very high. You have a lot of brain capacity working memory left to focus, to pay attention to what you need to do. And of course, that is also one of the ways in which you get into this super immersed state that we neuroscience is called flow. And that concludes the video. So thank you for your time and attention. Now to give you a brief summary, by watching this video, you have learned that our brain has a set capacity to focus. And we call this capacity working memory. However, unnecessary cognitive load, which could be unnecessary thoughts, distractions, or emotions, take away from our working memory and hence weaken our focus. You've also learned that procrastination is caused by emotional cognitive load. To be more precise, cognitive load is either caused by anxiety or overwhelm, that is when the task is too hard and far exceeds your skill level, or procrastination may be caused by boredom, when the task at hand is literally too boring. And finally, you know that the most effective way to sharpen your focus and to get into flow is to remove the clutter in your brain with the clear goals tool. And this means to take one minute to make a list of activities that you can execute task after task after task. And with the clear goals tool, you literally don't need to think anymore. You can remove all of the blocking thoughts and emotions in your head to lower cognitive load in your brain to do what matters, which is to use your brain capacity to focus and to execute. Also, if you're very ambitious and if you want to reach the next level of performance, uh, or if you want to go even beyond your thought what is possible, just shoot me an email at nicholasupitreich at gmail.com for neuroscience-backed high performance and flow coaching. For more information in the video description. That said, have a focused week, high performance, and I will see you in the next video.